Some of the things we should try to do practically, and the last time we discussed about the golden mean, where we said that virtue is always in the middle. And I explained how Aristotle, one of the great philosophers many years ago, came to realize that as we seek to be happy, to create some balance between thoughts and emotions, if we don't create good habits and good virtues, then our life becomes miserable. And that is why he ended up concluding that we have to check for a golden mean because virtue is in the middle ground. And we gave many examples of virtue, and we, I remember I explained one virtue, which is uh, courage, where I said the extreme of too much courage is not just over courageous, it's being rash, and therefore you can go blasting everybody, which is a vice again. And too much less courage brings you into a situation where you are fearful person who cannot even stand for his own rights. Now today, I don't say it's just because of public demand, um, I wanted to divert from Aristotle, but there were some few questions on social media and also from my friends, those who follow us, uh, who wanted to know the idea of happiness. How could Aristotle define that everybody is seeking happiness but yet not everybody is happy. So today we are going to discuss about happiness. If the virtue is in the middle, how can we make our lives happy? According to Aristotle, happiness depends on ourselves more than anybody else. So Aristotle himself enslines happiness as a central purpose of human life and goal in itself. So happiness, according to Aristotle, and even St. Thomas Aquinas later will come and talk about it, is a goal in itself. So as a result, he devotes more space to the topic of happiness. And I think when you look at all the philosophers, there's nobody who spoke about happiness in a wider perspective than Aristotle. Because for him, happiness depends on the cultivation of virtues. Again, what I spoke last time about the virtues, there can be no true happiness without virtue. And that's why we say that Aristotle was convinced that a genuinely happy life required the fulfillment of some conditions, including physical conditions, mental well-being, and in this way that is why happiness follows under his idea of science, which is actually a philosophical psychology in Aristotle. So essentially we have seen that uh, for Aristotle, virtue is achieved by uh, maintaining the mean, which is the balance between two excess. And for Aristotle, the mean was the method of achieving virtue. For you to have a virtuous life, you must seek a golden mean. So today we want to check again happiness. How does it become the ultimate purpose of human existence? So. This, again, is uh, the topic of happiness in Aristotle is found in that most influential work, Nicomachean Ethics, which we introduced last time, where he represents, the, the, he, he puts the theory of happiness. And uh, as we talk, that theory is 2,300 years old. But even now you realize that it is something that you realize is very practical for us. Because also in this topic, what we usually try to do is to bring high philosophical theories on the ground. So the key question Aristotle seeks to answer in these lectures, in the Nicomachean Ethics, is what is the ultimate purpose of human existence? What is that end or goal which we should direct all our activities? This is like asking yourself a very uh, good psychological and philosophical song. Um, a question, why am I here on earth? What is my purpose here on earth? Usually I meet so many young people, they have career, they have studied, they are maybe medical doctors, engineers and everything, but they still ask, why am I not happy? What should I do to be happy? Or what is the purpose of my existence? Now those are not questions that you can ask yourself so quickly and answer so quickly. 
Everywhere we see people are seeking happiness. People are seeking pleasure. People are seeking wealth. People are also seeking good reputation. I only like when I see some of my friends. He say, Father, pray for me. I want to be an MCA member of county assembly. After one time in the assembly, Father, I want to be an MP. After being an MP, I want to be a senator, governor, president. Now the problem is that there can only be one president in the world, in the country, but there are so many people who seek to be president. But why are so many people seeking? This is also an idea of seeking for reputation, an idea of seeking for wealth, getting known, famous. But why each of these has some value, none of them can occupy the place of the chief good, which is happiness. So to be an ultimate end, an act must be self-sufficient and final. That which you want to give you happiness must be self-sufficient and final, that you are not happy because of having or because of being this or that. That happiness is something that comes from you. So that it's something that is desirable by each and every person. Every person will say, I want to be happy. But the problem, how am I going to be happy? And this is not the happiness that comes because I'm enjoying this thing or I'm being with this person or I am this person at this moment. No, it is something that emanates from you. And that is why we say not only not all the rich people are happy and not all the poor people can be said to be unhappy. So Aristotle claimed that nearly everyone would agree that happiness is the end which meets all these requirements. It is easy enough to see that we desire, for example, money. Have you ever asked yourself why when people have money, they still want to get more money? When people have pleasure, they still want more pleasure. When, when people have honor, they want more honor. And because these people believe that these goods will make them happy, so if I get more money, I'll get more happy. But they get more money and they don't get happy. They continue looking for more money. So it seems that all other goods are a means to one's ob obtaining happiness. While happiness is itself an end in itself. So if you are using money, honor, pleasure and all this, they will not give you happiness. You'll still desire to be happy and you still continue seeking. So for Aristotle, happiness is a final end. It's a goal that encompasses the totality of a human person's life. It is not something that can be gained so easily. But if it cannot be gained so easily, again, it's not something that can be lost in a few hours. There is a difference between pleasure and sensations and happiness. So happiness in Aristotelian manner says that it is the ultimate value of a human person's life. How well somebody lives his or her life is what amounts to happiness. But if happiness you think comes because of the money you have, the more money you have, the more you seek for more, thinking that in, it, in, in looking for more money, you are seeking more happiness, only to find that you will probably live all your life looking for money, but at the end you'll never enjoy this money, so you'll never be happy. You'll die a seeking person, somebody who is seeking, somebody who is looking for more pleasure. And for this reason, one cannot really make any pronouncement about whether one has lived a happy life until it is over. Just as if you are watching a game, like yesterday there was a game between Manchester United and Arsenal, which according to my own analysis ended up badly, but you cannot say the game is good or bad before it is over. At half time you cannot make a judgment. So even in people's lives you cannot say this one is living a happy life before the life has come to an end. Because there are so many things that change. 
And that is why, again, you cannot say a child has lived a happy life. A child has a long history. And this history determines how this child slowly, slowly may attain happiness. So as Aristotle says, for as it is not one swallow or one fine day that makes a spring, so it is not one day or a short time that make a person blessed and happy. You cannot say we are living winter and it only came one morning, pop, it's winter. No, it is a progression of days. So Aristotle had what we call the hierarchical view of nature. So in order to explain human happiness, Aristotle draws on a view of nature he derived from his biological investigations. So if we look at nature, we realize that there is a hierarchy of being. And there are too many hierarchies of being that have been explained by Aristotle and philosophers. But today, I want to see to, to show that, and that is, we are talking of 2,300 years uh, ago, so this biology is not like the biology we understand. And therefore, according to Aristotle, in this hierarchy there are minerals. Minerals are rocks, metals, and other lifeless things. The only goal which these things seek is to come to a rest. They are built stupid since they are inanimate objects with no souls. So if you roll a stone, the stone only seeks to come to a rest. And that is actually the law of gravity. Everything seeks to come to a rest. You can imagine when you're in high school or primary school talking about the pendulum, whereby you, all the oscillations that comes, it's all seeking to come into a middle ground. That is where also Aristotle put virtue, the middle ground, a, a, a common place of rest. What of the vegetables, plants and other wildlife? Here we see a new kind of things, energy. Something which is alive because plants seek nourishment and growth. They have souls in themselves and they get satisfied. And that's why you see we have all these tropisms. This phototropism, a plant is seeking light. There is geotropism and there is also hydrotropism where you see the roots of the plant are going towards the water. So when we come back, we have discussed minerals and vegeta vegetation, that is the vegetative life. We shall try to come and analyze other uh, aspects in this hierarchy, that is animals and human beings. And then you realize that some of us are living actually what I can call vegetative life, life that has no soul, just to eat, drink, and rest. See you after the break. Thank you. Sakramenti ni nini na misingi yake iko wapi katika Biblia takatifu? Wavijua vipindi vya kanisa Katoliki ni alama na vyombo gani vinavyotumika katika maadhimisho ya ibada zetu? Ungana nasi kila siku ya Jumanne saa moja na nusu jioni katika kipindi cha Sakramenti na Biblia. Ni kutoka hapa Capuchin TV tukiikuza imani Katoliki kwa pamoja. Ekaristi Sakramenti ya Ekaristi ni sakramenti ya mwili na damu ya Yesu Kristo aliye kweli katika maombo ya mkate na divai. Kupata Ekaristi takatifu kama sikiza tuni yako, tuma neno sikiza likifuata na nambari 738102771 kwa nane moja moja. Coronavirus COVID-19 is a respiratory virus spreading across the world. The infection is spread from droplets of coughing and sneezing of an infected person, touching or shaking hands or being in contact with contaminated surfaces or objects with the virus. The signs and symptoms are fever, coughing, headache, body ache, difficulty in breathing. 
The disease can be prevented by regularly washing hands with soap and running water. Avoid close contact with people who have flu-like symptoms. Avoid handshake, hugs, and kissing. Also, protect yourself by covering your mouth or nose using a disposable tissue while coughing or sneezing. If you experience these symptoms and you had traveled or been in contact with a person from a country reporting COVID-19, you should isolate yourself for 14 days and seek immediate medical attention or report to the nearest health center. This message has been brought to you by the government of Kenya and its partners. For accurate information on COVID-19, dial star 719 hash or call 719. Follow us on Twitter at MOH underscore Kenya at spokesperson GOK at WHO. Capuchin TV, a Catholic Broadcasting Ministry. Misa takatifu ya kila siku ni kama ifuatavyo. Sa moja kamili asubuhi, sa saba unusu mchana, sa kuminambili jioni na sa mbili unusu usiku. God for the, the mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Mpenzi mtazamaji, tunakuwenzi na kukudhamini. Endelea kutazama. Capuchin TV Ekaristi Sakramenti ya Ekaristi ni sakramenti ya mwili na damu ya Yesu Kristo aliye kweli katika maombo ya mkate na divai Kupata Ekaristi takatifu kama sikiza tuni yako tuma neno sikiza likifuatwa na nambari 738102771 So thank you very much. Uh, I was talking about the hierarchy of life and beings in Aristotle, where he is trying to seek what is the uniqueness of a human person. So I was explaining about minerals, rocks. These are lifeless things. All they want is to come into their position of rest. You draw a stone, you just draw the law of gravity, come and rest. You do a pendulum. It moves around, but at the moment it comes in the middle and rest. The vegetative life is of, anim uh, of the plants. What they do, they all seek light, uh, phototropism, hydrotropism. They seek the, 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 they go, the roots go towards the water, and once they have that, they are satisfied. Now the animals, animals are, are and all the creatures are, that we stand, they belong to the animal kingdom. Here, among the animals, we see a level of life which is a bit higher. So animals, they seek pleasure and reproduction. And therefore, we sometimes can be able to talk of a happy or a sandy dog. But it is with some extent, it is much instinctual, it is with the instincts. The dogs can take care of the puppies, the dogs can allow the puppies to cross the road fast. But sometimes we see dogs that almost think better than human beings because in Dagoretti, a few years ago, a woman drew a child into the bush, but the dog brought it home. They have some kind of life that they seek. <clears throat> but now the human being, our question is, it, what is it that makes human being different from the rest of the animal kingdom. We also rest, like the stones. If you are thrown, you fall. You also seek uh, uh, sunshine and water. But what is it that makes you different from an animal? What is it that makes us different from animals, from dogs? You know, Aristotle answers that it is the reason. Only human beings are capable of acting according to principles and in so doing, taking responsibility of their choices. A human person does not act like an, an, like an animal. You can be able to take uh, care of your principles, and you can be held responsible for your choices. So you can blame Johnny for stealing the, the sweets, because Johnny must be taught that stealing sweets is wrong. But sometimes you don't blame the dog for barking. 
You, you, you cannot reason with a dog because the difference that makes the human being different from a dog is rationality, the possibility of reasoning, the possibility of doing some mental gymnastics before coming to a choice. And that is why you can ask someone, why did you choose this? See, I chose this because according to me, I looked at this principle, that principle, that principle. Then I ended up saying that although there are so many choices, I will make this choice. And sometimes a human being is put in a situation where both choices are either good or bad, but you have to choose one. Those are the principles we shall talk about maybe in the next few sessions. The principle of Dumbo effect or the principle of necessary evil where you make choices depending on those principles. So it seems that our unique function as human beings is to reason. And by reasoning things out, we attain our ends. And one of the ends is happiness. So when you reason, you solve problems. And then you live a life that is qualitatively different from plants and animals. The quality of life of a human person must be different from the quality of life of the vegetables. The good, the other thing you do when you reason, the good for a human is different from the good for an animal because we have different capacities and potentialities. There is something we call act and potency. The human being is actually, a child is actually a child, but it's also potentially an adult. It can potentially make many choices in between being a child as an adult, and these choices are going to determine what kind of an adult this child would be. And that is why the parents are always <coughs> maybe telling you, no, stop this, close the door, wipe this, wash your shoes, change your clothes. What the parents are doing, they are trying to actualize in you potentialities that will make you a responsible person. There is a young man, today I was telling my, my, my students in class, uh, this young man left home annoyed because the father was always telling him, don't do that, don't do that, don't, don't, so many don'ts. So he decided to go and hire a house for himself and stay alone. But when he finished his degree in civil engineering, he was called to a certain interview, and there were many applicants. And going to this interview, just at the gate, he found that the gate was wide open. And he remembered what the father would say. Why did you leave the gate open? I'm not the one who opened it, but why didn't you close it? So he closed the gate. Walking a few meters, he found a tap of water running. Then he said, maybe somebody forgot to close it. So he closed the tap. Going ahead, he found a slasher that was lying just in the... Uh, on top of the grass. And what did he do? He removed it and put it in a better place. Reaching the corridor, the lights were on. And he switched off the lights, remembering what the father always told him. Then he went for the interview. The others and overqualified. You know, there are times you go for the interview and you see <coughs> your friend has a file of one meter and you have only the four papers. But, you know, to his surprise, when he entered the panel, all the panelists stood and they bowed. They bowed to him. And they said, we don't want most of your papers. We have seen what we wanted, a responsible person. And this is what we are seeking in this company, somebody who is responsible. And he cried because he remembered this is all the father had instilled on him when he was always objecting. So a human person reasons, but in reasoning he makes choices and he becomes responsible of those choices. And for this reason, pleasure alone cannot constitute human happiness. For pleasure is what animal seeks. And if you are a person who always seeks for pleasure, ask yourself, am I living a human life or an animal life? Am I living a vegetative life? If you only want to eat and sleep and rest, that is more of what any, 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 any cabbage would do. If you want a life of pleasure, you see, like a dog does not make choices, 
the dog in the village would like to have as many other friends, dogs, so th to be famous. But a human person makes choices. Although I can have so many, then I need to be to remember that this is my choice. So in this case, because of reasoning, the goal is not to annihilate our physical urges, however, but to channel them in ways that are appropriate to our natures as rational animals. Thus Aristotle gives us his definition of happiness. The definition of happiness is whereby you live a virtuous life. And this virtuous life is lived as a human being that has rationality. If this is the case, then happiness turns out to be an activity of the soul in accordance with the virtue. There is no happiness without virtue. So the pursuit of happiness become an exercise of virtue. As you are seeking happiness, you are seeking a virtuous life. And now you will be able to see where we go wrong. Because happiness we want, everybody, but how do we seek to be happy? How do we direct our energies in seeking for this happiness? In the last quote, we can see another important feature of Aristotle's theory, the link between the concept of happiness and virtue. Aristotle tells us that the most important factor in the effort to achieve happiness is to have a good moral character. And that is what he called complete virtue. But being virtuous is not a passive state. One must act in accordance with virtue. Nor is it enough to have few virtues. Rather, one must strive to possess all of them. As I, I, I enumerated last time, there were so many. You cannot say, no, I have the virtue that I don't steal, but I insult people. No, I don't insult people, but I don't... I, so you cannot have only the few virtues. It is complete fabric. So he is happy who lives in accordance with complete virtue and is sufficiently equipped with external goods, not for some chance period, but throughout a complete life. What we are talking about is building your life to a point that these virtues are just part and parcel of you, such that when people talk about you, they don't talk about you in different manners. That sometimes he can be virtuous, sometimes he is not virtuous. Sunday he is virtuous as he is going to church. Because my dear brothers and sisters, look at ourselves when we are in church. When you see the Catholic faithful, for example, coming from Holy Communion on Sunday, you will swear that the devil does not exist. Even the way they walk, even the way they sing, even the, even the way they, you know, they smile before sitting down. But the same people who are the most corrupt people in our country, I don't mean they are Catholics, but uh, when you hear the list of corrupt people in Kenya, they still have the name Joseph, John, Anne, Rosemaria, all these names, meaning they are baptized creatures. They are baptized people. They were supposed to be moral people. And when you see them on Sunday during the Mass or in their services, you, my God, you'll think that the devil was not in existence. So why? Because people are able to live a complete, moral, virtuous life on Sunday for two hours, but meet them after that. A virtuous life is not momentarily. It must be lived to the full. It must be part and parcel of you. So according to Aristotle, happiness consists in achieving through the course of the whole lifetime all the goods, that is health, wealth, knowledge, friends, etc. All these goods that lead to perfection of human nature and for the enrichment of human life. And this requires to make choices, some of which may be very difficult. Often the lesser good promises immediate pleasure is more tempting. You know, <laughs> the reality is that it's a life of struggle. And the devil, as you know, when it comes to temptation, and I think I'll treat this topic one day for you, why do people get tempted? People get tempted because the devil, I've never heard somebody who come and say, Father, I'm tempted to be virtuous. 
I'm tempted to be good. I'm tempted to be kind. No, the devil tempts you with very nice things, very, very sweet things, uh, kind of things you also want, yeah? But because he knows that he can't tempt you with virtues, virtues are difficult. Virtues require a lot of effort. So the devil always tells you there is a reason you can be happy. Stop being happy by being humble. You can be happy by being less humble. So you can shout at everybody. So in conclusion, according to Aristotle, what is happiness? Happiness is the ultimate end and purpose of human existence. Happiness is that what we want, all of us. Again, happiness Happiness is not pleasure, nor is it virtue. It is the exercise of virtue. You get happy not because you are living a pleasurable life, but you are exercising virtue. Again, for Aristotle, happiness cannot be achieved until we make choices. And then happiness is a goal. We are not getting it here temporarily. We are moving towards happiness. And then happiness is the perfection of human nature. Since man is a rational animal, human happiness depends on the exercise of this reason. Happiness depends on acquiring a moral character, where one displays the virtues of courage, generosity, justice, friendship, and citizenship in one's life. These virtues involve striking a balance or golden mean. And at last, Happiness requires intellectual contemplation, for this is the ultimate realization of our rational capacities. By contemplation, I mean even before you sleep, you need to have maybe 10 minutes of examination of your conscience. How did I live my day? As I was trying to seek happiness, did I step on somebody's happiness? Did I seek to destroy somebody's happiness? for me to have my own happiness. That examination of conscience helps you to build a moral character that tomorrow you say, of course I want to be happy, but not at the expense of my neighbor. We meet next week and continue with these topics. There will be another topic still from Aristotle. So see you and I wish you a blessed week and may God bless you. Thank you very much. Capuchin TV, a Catholic Broadcasting Ministry. Misa Takatifu ya kila siku ni kama ifuatavyo. Sa moja kamili asubuhi, sa saba unusu mchana, sa kuminambili jioni, na sa mbili unusu usiku. God for the, the mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Mpenzi mtazamaji, tunakuwenzi na kukudhamini. Endelea kutazama. Capuchin TV